They are the kings of the Australian outback. You've got to concentrate all the time. Some of the biggest trains in the world. If things go wrong with these things, normally makes a big mess. On epic journeys through a hostile continent. I don't know what we're going to do. We slow down and blow the horn. A nation depends on them. All oh good, boys, get into it. And the teams that keep these metal monsters on the tracks. Yeah! Hauling huge loads of food, freight and mineral riches across incredible distances. We are out in the middle of nowhere, that's for sure. Big trains, big country. Railroad Australia. A wrong number on a permit. The repercussions can be up to $9,000 a minute. Brings a half million dollar repair to a halt. So it's a major, major issue. The red light, now red light, please. Who left the brakes on? That is bad. And stopped the famous GAN. For the simple reason that those wheels will be locked. Steel on steel, guess what happens? Stop his. Whoa, 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 whoa. And hunting the train monster. They have to go, Dave, we're too far behind it. They call the Great White Shark. Worth the chase. <laughs> Across Australia, track maintenance crews are the rail industry's unsung heroes. <laughs> Battling tight deadlines to do vital repair work keeping the nation's trains running safely. The pressure is huge, and today it's on the shoulders of Romberg project manager, Colm Hand. Well, the rail closed down for a tr three days and two nights. Time scales are tight, and the actual site itself is very confined. His job is to replace a turnout, allowing trains to enter a mine site for loading. It's a big task. And it's on one of the country's busiest railway networks, the Newcastle Coal Line. It's a key part of Australia's $60 billion industry, supplying the world's largest coal port. Just a few hundred kilometres from Sydney, 35 coal mines share a rail network to Newcastle Port. With trains each year transporting 170 million tonnes, that's a coal pile big enough to cover the Sydney Harbour Bridge. When the track needs fixing, it means a multi-billion dollar supply chain is brought to a standstill. Everything is based around here on, on the mines. Colm's only got 62 hours to complete the job. If the maintenance isn't completed, coal trains be delayed, ships will be delayed, and then payment will be delayed to the mines. If he goes even a minute past the deadline, his company, Romberg, must pay massive fines for stopping trains from getting to the port. The repercussions for, for not meeting the 8 o'clock handback on tours there, can be up to $9,000 a minute. If you delay by 12 hours, it will be a lot of money. At a staggering $6.5 million a train, there's huge pressure on Colm to make a quick start. The first task is to make sure the track crew is safe. Protection officer Dean Delaney puts small explosives on the line to alert train drivers of the work ahead. These detonators, the train comes. Train will pull up, he knows there's a work site in front of him. Just um, stops him from running over the boys. Uh, we've done our briefing now, so all our lads are, are heading out. So it's all go from here on in. Next, they must confirm permission from network control to cut the track. <laughs> but it's not good news. What's the situation, Dean? 22380, that's, that's the wrong site notice. They've been given the wrong permit number. Work can't begin. We should be cutting by now. We should be taking the panels out. 
This job's taken months of negotiation, but a simple incorrect permit number has thrown everything into chaos and Romberg's reputation is on the line. We never hand it back late. We deliver. Millions of dollars are at stake. If too much time is lost, Colm faces having to cancel the job. Heading northwest to the desert centre of Australia, where luxury transcontinental passenger train, the GAN, is halfway through its epic 3,000 kilometre journey. Experienced train manager Bruce Smith has had his hands full. 20 years on the train and I still pull when I should push. Ensuring 280 passengers have been fed, watered and entertained. What a sea of happy smiling faces. But behind the scenes, he's been dealing with every problem the train can throw at him. Ah, uh, red light, 74, red light. From missing stock... OK, now these are the scallops off the IP. ..to a PA system breakdown. She said, we've had no PA since we left. And this trip is far from over. Having left Adelaide a day ago, and now in Alice Springs, today the GAN is set to continue its journey snaking its way up to Darwin, the capital of the north. In the Alice... Hello, welcome. ...passengers are returning from sightseeing tours... And you had fun? ..as Bruce's staff make final preparations for the train's departure. Marsha! Simone's bringing it now. She's there. Station manager Cathy Stewart is run off her feet juggling a multitude of odd jobs, from collecting the laundry to filling each of the train's 34 carriages with 3,000 litres of water, enough to last a 1,000 k's. The worst thing you can do is miss a carriage. The second worst thing you can do is leave the air off and then the train leaves and they can't use the showers anyway, even if it's full. All passengers are on board. Before they can leave, Bruce must release two carriage handbrakes and secure the train. Travelling at 115 kilometres an hour means all doors must be locked. No train will leave any station till it's been secured. He has to move quickly. The GAN has a strict departure time. I need to leave at 6 to be at Catherine at 9 o'clock. It shares a rail line with the north-south freight trains with only the occasional passing loop. Miss his window on this busy line and Bruce could be delayed for hours. We pay to have that window and that allows us to run on the track, you know, uh, up and back. Get out of that window and you're in trouble. Times are ticking. But there's almost a kilometre of train and no quick way to do it. We need to get away on time and uh, it's starting to look as though we mightn't. And that's when I start to panic. Finally, the last door is secured. And Bruce can give the drivers the all clear to start moving. Train's been secured, you have the first as soon as you have the road, over. That's always a good sign, you hear that? That's the brakes coming off. And that only means one thing. The air brakes are off, the train can move out. But as it starts rolling, Bruce realises he's forgotten something. Uh, red light, Mal, red light, please. I've got to take the handbrake off. The manual handbrake at the rear is still on. That is bad. Um, for the simple reason, 4,000 horsepower up the front will pull a train. But those wheels will be locked and still on still, guess what happens? From one of Australia's most photographed trains to Port Augusta, where a pair of train photographers are on a mission. Dave Innes and Eddie White are extreme train spotters. Rail buffs who travel vast distances on outback roads. Oh, are you OK there? Yep. They come fully armed, braving the elements. Like, 
pushing themselves We're not going to make any time. to the limit I'm out of my comfort zone. to capture the ultimate train shot. <laughs> Port Augusta, South Australia, where the great north-south and east-west train lines converge. Ex-chauffeur Dave Innes has just driven 2,000 kilometres to get here. Port Augusta's not much to look at, but for Dave, it's the perfect holiday destination. And the scenery couldn't be sweeter. It's a passion Dave's had since boyhood. I worked as a 15-year-old boy for the railways in New South Wales for 25 years, to where I saw locomotives in my face every day. He's not the only one mad for trains. Truck driver Eddie White produces his own rail calendars. You're always looking for something different to put into your shots. Just big curve, mountains in the background, and that's why I'd love to come out this way. Eddie and Dave are meeting up in Port Augusta for two days of intense train chasing. They've got a list of trains to catch. And topping the list, is a freight monster known as the Great White Shark. Close to two kilometres long, a two-storey beast with the horsepower of 20 trucks. But before teaming up with Eddie, Dave's on a reconnaissance mission to a place the Great White's been known to frequent. I've come 2,000 kilometres to tick this off my bucket list. I'm hoping to capture that train out in the middle of nowhere. He studied the trains out here, but isn't familiar with the roads. And now he's regretting it. Oops, hang on a second. His rental van was great for the highway, ah. but the bitumen disappeared a while ago. The Great White's leading him deeper into uncharted waters. Northeast of Sydney, on one of the busiest rail lines in Australia, trains are stopped, workers are waiting, and precious minutes are ticking by. Yeah, we should be cutting by now. We should be taking the panels out, so probably half hour behind now. On a time critical track replacement job, Colm and Dean have been issued a permit number that doesn't match the one they've given the coal mine. Just a little bit of complication between getting the possession with the mine. Paperwork must be followed to the letter. They can't start until it's sorted out. It's just I've got to have an agreement with you through, so, so control will let us start work. That's all. If they lose too much time, the job may have to be cancelled. It's just a non-conflicting work tie between um, me and you. After months of meticulous planning, it's a stressful situation. That's correct. I'm happy with that if you are. Thanks, mate. Good. Finally, with two hours okay. lost, All good. the mine site signed off and work can begin. It did cost a lot of, a lot of time now. We should be nearly getting excavators in to dig now and we're only starting to cut. They must quickly cut and remove 45 tonnes of steel. Two hundred metres of track is carted away in huge chunks. Then, dig up the ground ready for a new foundation. The excavation started late and will continue into the night shift. The team must lay a rock base for the new rail. It needs to be solid enough to sustain the repeated impact of trains weighing 11 and a half thousand tonnes. We're putting in a structural layer of um, capping. This is the foot of the job. And that means it has to be rolled, compacted and tested before Colm's daytime team arrives to put down the new rail. It's taken eight hours to prepare the foundation for testing. A density gauge measures how compact the ground is. Put some moisture. 
And it's telling them... It's only two twos. Yeah, I think. It's not solid enough. I'm not getting a consistent enough readings that are um, high enough for the density. So we'll have to throw the roller on it and then hopefully achieve our density that way. That means more rolling, chewing up more precious time. Travelling inland to Alice Springs. The GAN manager, Bruce Smith, has left one of the rear carriage handbrakes on. That is bad um, for the simple reason that those wheels will be locked and steel on steel, guess what happens? You get a flat wheel. Intense heat can misshape the wheels and if left unnoticed, could cause major damage to the train. The drivers would have said, uh, you got a handbrake on? So, but I got in first. Clear the terminal, you got the second, mate. Roger, second run received. Thank you. With the handbrake off, the GAN rolls out of the Alice. In the Platinum Kitchen car, dinner service is already in full swing. This is about a capacity. It's about as busy as it can get. With the chef serving up 150 three-course meals. OK, who's next? Back in the train's budget diner, service manager Tony Jones, an ex-policeman, is now directing traffic. I've got Chardonnay or Sauvignon Blanc. I've had a lot of fun in the police. I've been shot at twice. Well, I was sitting in the police car and the bullet hit the police car. After taking retirement, he's found a new, less stressful career. But tonight, he's a man down, under pressure. $14.50, thank you. And it's about to get worse. OK, how are you going there? Chicken curry, one. Oh, hang on. He's rung up 600 chicken dinners, totaling nearly $9,000. No, 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 no. I want to delete this. Time to radio for backup. Train manager, Red Service. Roger Bruce, we made a, a major mistake on the tool. Tony, I'm pretty busy. The Cherie are down at the other end shifting some guests. Uh, if you can able to battle on, that'll be great, mate. This is a mistake I don't need. If I press the delete button, I, I thought it would have deleted the whole thing, but it doesn't. Tony's relaxing new job suddenly has him wanting to hit the escape button. In South Australia, there's a train hunt going on. Ah. But there's not a loco in sight. At the end of this track, rail fan Dave Innes is hoping for a glimpse of a freight train known as the Great White. At a famous train spotter's lookout called Yorkie's Crossing. <laughs> Ex-chauffeur Dave is used to smooth bitumen. Just getting here is a minor miracle. I think somebody up above there is looking after me to achieve this place I've wanted to go. Mate. I am about to jump out of my vehicle and shout for joy. This is... this is it. Look at that. I have arrived. It's like going to Mecca. Uh, Catholics go to Rome, Mormons go to Salt Lake City. I've come here to Yorkies Crossing. You beauty. There's a rumble in the distance. Dave's moment of truth. This could be the Great White. It's not. The beast is still out there. The next day, Dave and fellow rail buff Eddie are upping the ante. We may only get 
a couple of trains out here today. Ditching train spotting for train chasing. A chance at multiple shots along the line. First on the list, an iron ore train. They've caught it. But Eddie's not happy with the shot. We've got to be on the other side of the line to get the photos. The race is on. It's camper van versus 3,000 horsepower loco. Yes, straight ahead, Jeff, keep going. To get the killer shot, they must cross the tracks. We're not going to make it to the, to the crossing. The pressure's on Dave to get in front of the train. The only safe place to cross is less than a kilometre ahead. So we make a lot more ground up on it right now. You can see the sweat rolling off my brow. It's going to be tight. Touch and go. <laughs> Aboard the GAN, in the economy section, passengers wait patiently. Ex-policeman Tony Jones is under fire. We made a major mistake on the tour. He's rung up 600 chicken dinners. I thought it would have deleted the whole thing, but it doesn't. And now he's having to delete them. One chicken at a time. Let's see if I can get this in now. Down to 290. Hang on. You only want one serve of chicken, don't you? This is like the five loaves and two fish has gone wrong. 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. $14.50, thanks for that. Case closed. I need a drink. <laughs> oh. With all the passengers fed, the GAN travels through the night, covering almost a thousand kilometres and crossing the mighty Tanami, a desert more than twice the size of Ireland. We're running on time, nine o'clock into Catherine. It's early morning, but outside, already the mercury's rising. Technician Jeff Birrell must prepare the train for sweltering conditions. Just putting them on a daytime temperature, the carriages. Um, it's going to be pretty hot up here today, probably around 38 or so, I'd say. He needs to inspect the beating heart of this hotel on wheels. Check inside the engine room. Make sure the oils and waters are OK. Inside the GAN's two power vans, Three 240 horsepower generators deliver vital electricity to the train's 30 carriages. There are a lot of things that will break down because of the heat. You have to keep a pretty good eye on the on the power vans, especially because they'll be working at maximum capacity, especially a train this long. You have to keep a, a good eye on the refrigeration systems in the dining cars and in the bars. What would you like? Because you don't want the food to spoil or anything like that. Arriving in the remote town of Catherine, passengers disembark for a river tour. A chance to meet some of the locals. There you go, smile on, please. <laughs> at the famous Catherine Gorge. But on their return. Yes, sir. Train manager Bruce gets an unexpected call from the tour operator. Yeah, 74 train manager receiving. We may be a little bit later than one o'clock over. A bus with 30 passengers and five train staff has been held up. Do you know the reason why we haven't got all the buses back already, Evan? One of the gorge boats was delayed coming back. A late bus means a late train. It's the old domino effect, mate. Yeah, yeah. If delayed too long, the GAN may miss its travel window altogether, which could mean a very late arrival into Darwin. We don't do late, not if we can help it. <laughs> it. 
In New South Wales, Romberg track crew are racing the clock. They've got only four hours to build a rock foundation, with new track ready to be laid at dawn. We should be nearly on our second cap and layer. We're behind schedule at the minute. There are still three layers to go, and they've failed their first density test. Uh, a little low for what we're after. The only solution, to keep rolling. Don't compact it, just roll it and get as much cover as quick as you can. Supervisor Jay has an eye in the sky. A drone giving him a big picture view of their progress. I can be standing out of the way of the machine and still get footage of our guys doing what they do best. With another two and a half hours of rolling under their belt, a second test will confirm whether the rock base is solid enough. We're there. We are there. The team immediately start work on the second layer. By morning, they've clawed their way back. Project manager Colm is now ready to lift four huge 12-tonne sections into place. It's a two-excavator job. But there's a problem. Nothing to stop them coming off except the gravity. One of the hired machines is missing a major safety feature. We just noticed uh, one of the machines doesn't have an approved lifting lug. It's just a connection point between the excavator and the chains. So it has to be tested. To stress test it to make sure it can actually withhold the load that we're going to put it under. If something happened, we, we could all get done for manslaughter. So it's a major, major issue. In South Australia, train chasers Dave and Eddie are in full flight. See the sweat rolling off my brow. They need to cross in front of this ore train if they're going to get the killer shot. If it's true, it's certainly going to be touch and go. They've been fighting to get ahead for almost a kilometre, battling potholes and corrugations. But finally, they're in luck. We are sure he's making a lot more ground up on it right now. The train's slowing down. No, he's, he's backing off, so... And the level crossing's coming up. Have you got enough time to go across? You want to go, or is it too close? Oh, no, we'll be right. Here we go. They've beaten it to the crossing, and in plenty of time. So stop here, stop here, quick, 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 quick. Be beautiful sun here. It's another loco checked off their list. That was extremely close. Worth the chase. <laughs> The ore train's given them a taste for more. But first, the waiting game. Just waiting. Yeah. Eddie, I reckon there's a train up there, but... Could be. Time will uh, tell. There it is. There he is. Oh, we've got bloody bulldogs on this too. Beautiful. This train has a rare 1960s bullnose as its second loco. Perfect for Eddie's annual calendar. Just trying to get a couple of photos of, of all the engines. But only if they can catch it. I think we're going to struggle, but you, can, you never ever know. We might nail it. Go, go, you get, 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 just 300 kilometres shy of its destination, the GAN is due to leave. One of the gorge boats with the late coming back. Manager Bruce is sweating on a late tour bus, carrying passengers and five of his Platinum Service staff. Yeah, all right. 
A small delay here could hold the GAN up for hours, with other freight trains scheduled to use the single line up to Darwin. Late's not good. We don't do late. That's the problem. Finally, the missing bus. Is that the last bus, over? That is the last bus. Passengers and staff can now be boarded. Through this door and then just walk down to your carriage. We're late. 15 late. Despite being behind schedule, Bruce is taking no shortcuts with securing the train. Let's be proactive and march forward. He's a man on a mission. Whoa. Whoa. Fair bump play on. Finally, the last door. But after four hours at the station... The lockdown of the Miller train is complete, Eva. Yeah, roger that. Uh, 7 4 uh, station work complete. Nick says we can go. A passenger urgently wants to get off. You got the first. Roger that. 7 4 No, D. No, no, we're going. Oh, no. You, no, no. I have to leave. Red light, red light. For the Romberg crew, it's a slow start to the day. They should be lifting new track into place. But project manager Colm's got an unsafe excavator on his hands. We just noticed uh, one of the machines doesn't have an approved lifting lug. The lifting point, or lug, hasn't been stress tested and could easily snap. Finding a new machine could take hours. There are heavy fines for holding up heavyweight coal trains. Each extra minute the network remains closed, Romberg will be charged $9,000. Colm hopes the nearby mine site will come to the rescue. Well, this check me lift studies, but uh, yeah, it's good. He's in luck. Uh, yeah. They've got a spare excavator. Got a machine from uh, the job down here. 26 tonnel. Yep. So he's walking up now. Yep. All right. But the good news doesn't last long. The machine that we were promised, you know, they've, they've told us that we can't get it. We're not happy. Yeah, it's been, it's been a tough morning. The nearest replacement's over 200 kilometres away. The total time lost is probably going to be four and a half hours, yeah. With no option but to wait, the pressure's piling up by the minute. We, we, should, be, we should be lifting now, but we're not. Finally, after five hours, the machine arrives and the team can swing into action, lifting huge track sections into place. With the team now well behind schedule, pressure's on the night shift to catch up. Run out of time, mate. There's a huge amount of work to do, and only 24 hours left to do it. They must weld the track sections together at high heat and spread 500 tonnes of crushed stone over the rail. This layer will bear the impact of extreme loads. To ensure the rail is level, it must be packed evenly. A job for the mother of all track machines. A $7 million monster known as the Tampa. They're working flat out. But they're still behind. If we go overtime, uh, it means delays in terms of trains, millions of dollars lost to the coal companies. Miss this deadline by even an hour, and Romberg could be up for half a million dollars in fines. Yeah, receiving, uh, Cherie. On the GAN. 
Manager Bruce has secured the train. For uh, station work complete, Nick says we can go. And given the order to start moving. But a passenger wants to get off. No, D, no, no, we're going. You, no, no. Red light, red light, 7-4. You have to what? Roger that, red light, also. Okay, you just have to go back. Just back a bit. All right, lovely. No, that's all right. There we go. Thank you. You're welcome. It's an unexpected last minute departure. They've had a half hour delay. But now the GAN is on the final stretch into Darwin. But back in his office, Bruce gets a nasty surprise. Why is that saying that? He's locked all the doors, but the train's computer system is saying otherwise. It means all those carriages are not locked. No, they shouldn't be red like or like that. Uh, so While he's confident it's a malfunction, it's a safety risk Bruce can't ignore. He'll have to check them all again. we just double check because I can't see that lock. Good man. It's a 1.6 kilometre round trip. Afternoon, everybody. How are we all? With narrow hallways. Afternoon. And 70 doors to get through. We're just about there, mate. Now I've got to walk down the power van. They were all secured, but for my own peace of mind, yeah, double check. With all the delays, Bruce is hoping the driver can make up time and arrive in Darwin on schedule. You can still do a five o'clock, can't you? We will certainly try, Adam. No, you're still at the top of the list of my Pacific National Drivers, mate. Well, all right. That's that warm, fuzzy feeling I was looking for. It's been an epic 3,000 kilometres. Slicing through the country from bottom to top. Bruce's team has worked around the clock for three days, giving the passengers a luxurious ride over some of the country's most inhospitable terrain. Finally, the famous double red locos pull into Darwin. We certainly hope you've enjoyed your journey. On time. Thank you and goodbye. Yeah, 74 train manager. Can you just let me know when we're under 10 k boys, so I can get a door open, thanks. For the passengers, it's been the trip of a lifetime. Randall, how are you, brother? But for Bruce and his team... Attention all staff, please uh, open all outside doors and allow our guests to disembark, thank you. Tomorrow it's back aboard to do it all again. Oh, he's crossing. Whoa, stop, yep, stop here. Stop here. Whoa, 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 whoa. Dave and Eddie are chasing a prized bull nose locomotive. That was probably a little bit too close for their comfort, but it's all good, so we've got it. It's a great win for the boys, but there's still one train that's at the top of the food chain. Time for one last bite at the Great White. Yeah, just looking here. MP5 at 7, 1747, yeah, we might be able to get that. Back at train spotting Mecca, Yorkies Crossing, and this time, they're go. doing it in style. This has been the best three days of my life. The distance we've travelled, yep. experiences we've shared. We'll just um, wait here now for a bit and hopefully the other train comes. And we'll just see how we go. There should be a train rolling out of Spencer's Golf right past my front veranda. Finally. The Great White, the SCT Melbourne to Perth freight train. Two locos and 8,000 horsepower at the head. 
75 white wagons on the tail. This two kilometre long monster is the last train of the day and it's been worth the chase. Oh, this is, this is great, absolutely. The vision, the sound. This is absolutely fantastic. I feel like I've won the lottery. In New South Wales, Colm's got only nine hours before coal trains need to start running. It's not good because we've got 12 hours more to walk now to do in nine hours. The track levelling machine is still going flat out. We came in this morning and we're um, expecting our machine to be finished. Adding to the pressure, Colm's boss has arrived. Oh, a few dramas here this morning, eh? At this rate, they'll miss the deadline. If they hold up the coal mines, millions of dollars are at stake. Oh, there's heavy penalties. So there's a, there's a big impact on us contractually if we're late. Colm's called in more troops. So we've got the Dexter track team. Okay. The reinforcements will be critical if the job is to be completed on time. It's a race to the finish line. Finally, after a 62-hour marathon, the job's done and the teams come to see their hard work pay off. The first trains arrived early, ready to use the new turnout, allowing it to enter the mine site. On the train, the driver switches the line. Must be an issue, he's ringing. Hang on, Ted, this is up under free. But there's a problem. Yeah, right here, mate. I'll get our single electricians to go and have a look. The tracks changed, but 300 kilometres away, at train control, nothing's showing up on their system. What could it be? I don't know. The, the train's out waiting to come in. Yeah. An adjustment, and it's time to test it again. Okay, I'm swinging there, mate. All clear? No yep, all clear, mate. How'd you go? With the train waiting, everything hinges on a callback from track control. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we're stoked to this job. It's come up really good, like, yeah. Uh, client's happy, we're happy. Finally. A sight that makes it all worthwhile. The team's hard work helping to keep the nation on track. Next time on Railroad Australia. Generally, if something goes wrong, it's pretty serious. A race to load the hay train. Trying not to miss the boat. Deep in the outback, the Savannah Lander whoa, whoa, hey, 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 hey. has a close encounter. Did you get it? And a vintage steam train is hit hard by senseless vandals.